to the organizer and thank you everyone for giving us some rest time for giving me the slot this afternoon. And my title is uh, Ge Geometrically Bounding Three Manifolds. I will try to omit some geometric details and to guarantee all of you uh, at least a clear outline. And my talk is will be divided into four parts. The abstract backgrounds and preliminary knowledge and the admissibilities and orientability. And finally is our sketch of our proof. And firstly, let's look at the abstracts and know something what I'm going to talk about. It is well known that an arbitrary close orientable three manifolds can always be realized as a boundaries of a four manifold. However, there are very rare close hyperbolic three manifold M which is a boundary of the total geodesic hyperbolic four manifolds. As we can see, we just add some geometric conditions to our original theorems. Why this rears, I will show it later. And in this talk, let V be the volumes of the regular right angle hyperbolic dodecahedrals in H3. Then for each n is a positive integers, we show that at least Five n plus three over two close hyperbolic three manifolds of volume sixteen m v, which bounding a totally geodesic hyperbolic four manifold. The proof actually is used a small cow theory over a sequence of light groups to decahedral. And let's see the details. Firstly, let's see the surface. Um, it is an open question that what kind of close n manifolds can bound and M plus one manifold. The Roblin in 1951 gave us this theorem that any three dimensional manifolds can be realized as a boundary of a four dimensional manifolds. And in 1983, the Farrell and Strzok curves give us a, give a conjecture that every almost flat M manifolds bounds a M plus one manifolds. This is still open, but a lot of scholars give some example. They give some example too. And Professor Fang Fu Chen also gave us some example this year. Uh, yeah, this year. And in 1983, the same year, the two person also give a conjecture that every flat and manifold M is a cut section of a hyperbolic M plus one manifold. This cut section just ensure there is a um, hyperbolic closed three manifolds that's the geometry boundings. But this conjectures, um, the long race gave a negative answer. Why? Because he showed that if a hyperbolic closed three manifolds M is geometrically bounding, then inter M is light in the Z. This one inter M is a uh, inter invariance. Mm, and in the 1992, this two person showed us the set of this inter invariance of all hyperbolic three manifold is dense in R. So we can see that if we have, uh, we want to show that it's a geometrically bounding is light in Z. So it's something rare. Yeah. And we come to some definition first. If a hyperbolic M manifold N is a totally geodesic boundings of a hyperbolic M plus one manifold N. Then we said M bounds geometrically or M is a geometrically bounding hyperbolic manifolds. And the questions I want to talk about is for a hyperbolic closed three manifold M, <coughs> is there a hyperbolic total geodesic four manifold N such that the boundary of N is exactly the M? And from the Georgeson and Thurston dense surgery theories in 1978, given our X in the positives R a rational number, uh, no, the real number, they are only finitely many hyperbolic three manifolds with volume x with a given volume. Then uh, this means we can just transfer this into this, we can consider function like this. This is a supper of n and n is a different three manifolds which have the same values less than equal than x. So this uh, surgery's claim means that fs is finite and the um, Milik-Chaps in 
2015 shows FX growth at least factorially. So our ambition is one to find is finite and want to find at least a lower bound of how many and want to conjust an exact example of what is a bounding uh, manifolds, a geometrically bounded manifolds look like. We just use the following thing. Our main result is let V be the volumes of a regular right angle hyperbolic dodecahedrons in H3. Then for each end in as a positive integers, there are a list so many close hyperbolic three manifolds of volumes sitting and V, each of them bounding a totally geodesic hyperbolic four manifolds. To and um, I guess we can say that we just give a lower bounds of we, I just say that's the uh, not very common and rare uh, situation or condition. So let's go to some very basic definition. I think most of you are very familiar with this, but I go through this quickly. And let K be the abstract simplex, simplicial complex and also give her n pairs of topological space. We just use these two things to do the polyhedral product. It's like that the K is the skeleton and this n pairs of topological space just added to the skeletons to construct a new things, new complex. Okay, we can see the example directly. Uh, this is a, uh, if they are the same pair, that this notation is abbreviated as this one. And especially the D1 S0K is defined as a real moment angle complex. The first speaker also give this definition too. And we can have a quick look at the example. Let K be the boundary of a triangle and the maximum com simplex of that is this three. And we can compute that the R that K in this situation is exactly the S2. So we remember this and later we will show there are some uh, there are some things, uh, actually you can say the equivalent definitions about this real moment manifold. But now he's a complex, but now not a manifold. So in what conditions if this complex can be realized as a manifold? Davis in 2008 and Cai Li in 2013 gave this Give this theorem is said as the this real moment complex is a topological and manifold if and only if K is a judge the general's homology has as, as n minus one, which means the fundamental group is zero when n minus one is equal is less than equal than two. And when we are assuming the P n to be an n dimensional sim simple polytop and K, oh, just omit the M minus one, make the denotion simple. And this K is the duals of the boundary of PM. Then RZK is definitely to be a topological and manifold. GH, the general? Oh, the general homology sphere. So we just mentioned one way to construct the real Momongo manifolds. Here's the another way. Actually, I want to be very familiar with what Davis and Yaskevich in introduced in his 1991 paper. And this is, this is some uh, three the notions is FPN is the facet, means the one co-dimensional phase of PN. And E1, then EN is the basis in the Z2N. And here is a characteristic function. Just, just put, uh, just transfer each facet to the basis. And also, we can very simple observation is that the F1 and F1 shares a common vertex, and they generate they the lambda F1 and lambda F1 generates the Z2n. Here is the dimension of the polytop. So we can have the con reconstruction use this equivalent relations. Here, if P is lighting the 
in the boundaries, it go to the, the second lines, and if in the interiors, it's the first line. And we can easily to, see, to prove that these two things is exactly the same. We use the reconstruction procedure, or we use the polyhedral products over a boundary of a simple polytop. They come to the same thing. Uh, I don't want to prove this, but I can show the example because I we showed before that the S two as a, a come from the polyhedral products procedures is a real homological manifold. Then how about from this reconstruction procedure? Now we can define a characteristic function on a simple polytop. The P is um, the simplest, actually the triangles too. And the boundary is exactly k. The k is what we mentioned in the, the last example is the boundary of the triangle. Then we can have this characteristic function. And now we have a pieces because z3, 2 is have a element. And here we see is minor inverse will be the minus in this abelian case. It will be if Oops, sorry. Oh. So if it's within the A, B, that means in this part that we will have this uh, equivalence relations. They relate in the same. Then we just group some pieces together in these levels and we do the same. Uh, skins again and again. We just groups together some some age together here and then at the final we get a sphere. Is what coincide with what we get in the last example. And now we come to the booster invariance and root tower manifold. Maybe this root tower manifold have other definition was in this talk is means these things are explained. A natural Z2N action, we have a natural Z2N actions on the real mobile angle manifolds when M is actually the cardinalis of the facet. Now the booster invariance means the mass mode rank of the <coughs> subgroups of Z2N, which edge can add on the real mobile angle manifold free or I can say that freely on it. And then we can have a, a families of closed manifolds by just quotient by the edge. If this number is equal to n minus n, then this manifold is named as a small cover. So assuming the rank of the freely acting subgroup H is R, so we will have these two exact sequence. At the drill momango manifold case, we have the characteristic function, and now by quotient case, we also can deduce a characteristic function like that. And by the four color theorems, if M minus N is less than or equal to three, or N is less than or equal to three, the real booster invariance is exactly equal to m minus n. It means that in the three dimensional, the in the three dimension, the root small cover can be always be realized. So this is a remark. The free acting requirement ensuring the light independent conditions always stands at every vertex. That means for each vertex, v is exactly. This kind of kind, this kind of process intersects, and this thing is extends a basis of Z two N. So we can just extend what what we just uh, mentioned before the reconstructions procedure of the real Momago manifold to all the real toric manifold here. So we have this one to one corresponding. Just we use this to denote the corresponding real toric manifold. So about the topology of this 
uh, this family of real close closed manifolds, we have such theorem. So David Sanskevich gave us the Z2 coefficient cohomology of small cover depends only on the underlying polytop and its characteristic function. And Lee also gave a results on the Z coefficient cohomologies of real Momongo manifolds. And Alexander gave some results on the rational cohomologies of the real torus manifold. And Su Yongs and Hentros gave a formulas of the cohomology of real Turing manifolds. And it can be also viewed as the combinatorial versions of the hostile theorems given in the 1972 nearly, more or less. Hoxter. Hoxter. The spelling is wrong. <laughs> oh, sorry, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hodgeson. Yeah, 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 Hodgeson <laughs> theorem. So here is some explain on the trails and the Hentros work because that will be that will make sense uh, count a lot in our in my further calculation. K is a simplicial complex on one and n, and phi is such a bijectic map such that i's entrance of the v is non-zero if and only if i is light in the phi v. And lambda is a Z2N coloring characteristic function. And this is the characteristic matrix just place uh, each image of the facets to range them into a matrix. And the rows lambda is a Z2 space gener generated by the N rows of lambda. So Charles and the Park's theorem is give us a, a formula to Calculate very easily, easily to calculate the beta number actually, and I can show an uh, example quickly. If we want to calculate the beta number of the claim bottles, and here, the claim bottles can always can. I just mentioned the reconstruction procedure, and now the claim bottles can also be reconstruction by our polytop <coughs> P. Here is a square, and along the this is the maybe it's too small the color different color. And now the row lambda, the row space is generated by this two because I just placed the one zero, one one, one zero, one one, one one zero one here. And it generates this space. And for the omega one is the empty by definition here is equal to one. So if it's one zero one one, I just pick the first, third and the fourth point. This one, this one, this one. So it's from top to a point. So I can got the beta number is the same thing for those for this two situation. And I can we can finally calculate the beta ones of the climb bottle is one one zero. Um, so, in our sentence, the polytos we interesting is polytos like that. The P is a regular right angle hyperbolic dodecahedral in H3, and MP means we just like rules the polytop. Like root just means that we just this phi gaunt become the six gaunt if I like root two P. And I, we have a very simple definition about the adjacent metric. It means that if the i's and j's are connected by a one simplex in K, they, uh, the adjacent matches the item is one, otherwise it's zero. Because it, like, if it's a polytop is due of its boundaries, it will like a simplicial simple complex. And I can use their matrix to encoding their adjacent relation. Oh yeah. If I have two, this is not simple thing. So I mean, you put, you will put uh, several layers of x 
Separate. If I three P, I just add more layer. Yeah. So if this is a three piece, I just got something thinner and thin. This is a polytop. The object polytops in the bottom. What is n here? N is the number of how many P's are grouped up. So. We label like in this manner. The first one is one, and the last one is uh, the, the, the last is a cardinal of the the facets. And for the odd layer, we just place the first one in the middle and the left, right, left, right. But in the even level, just first one in the middle and the right, left, right, left. Why we put this? Because the adjacent matches will <coughs> sit light. Um, just like uh, follow some certain rules, and it will easy to compute by the computer. The other parts are all zero. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The other part, the color part is one, and the other part is zero. And here's some definition first. Uh, the two G manifold M one and N two are equivalent homeomorphisms. Means there is a homeomorphism f from m1 to m2 together with for some for all the g in the g, they are f as in the m1. This equation stands, and the two g manifolds said to be equivalently homeomorphic if that match exists, and let a to be the symmetric groups of the pn, and the g is the g i and z, and small cover this two. These two small cover are equivalently homeomorphic if we can find the A and G to let this stand. And if we fix the color of the first three facets to be E1, E2, and E3, as mean that we caution this part. Because now so we fix the first three color and make no something like linear transformation. So we just uh, if I, we fit fit this three first color, we can guess how many uh, the uh, the color just difference only up to the uh, positions of uh, a. So if this in the one p, they are two one six five two so one hundred sixty five, and the one p is that many. In the three P is that many. What? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, so we didn't caution. We didn't caution this part, but we will caution this part. Actually, it's not the equivalent homeomorphism because we didn't caution caution this part. Hmm. You can mean that, but I didn't caution this part. Um, we can find that many. And some notation remark: we can encode this LZ2 star coloring vector by an integer through the binary. A characteristic matrix can also be viewed as a characteristic vector, like in the example two. The characteristic matrix is like that way. And use the binary, we can just correspond into a characteristic vector. One, two, four, and this is also the notation for the row space of the characteristic metric. So we can to this definition is a admissible extending. This is a preparation actually. Start from a Z two three coloring lambdas on the MP. Now uh, for MP, they are exactly five n plus seven facet. Mm, we can have one and minus one Z24 coloring on MP by adding a non zero fourth rows to the three times M characteristic metric lambda. Just like we add one more line, this candidates can be zero or one. So we can have one and uh, two and two and power and minus one choice. And we can see that those characteristic functions are 
could extending and they are naturally satisfied the linear independent because if this this three just linear dependence and no matter what I add up. So the Z23 color ring lambda on MP is admissible if there is an extending Z24 color ring delta satisfying this nth MP lambda is unorientable while the nth MP delta is orientable. Such delta is called an admissible extending of lambda. And we see from the last definition that we have so many choice. But if we turn for a admissible extending, it is unique. By the work of Nakayama and Nishimura, the orientability of small cover is clear. And they give such theorem that for basic E1 <coughs> da, 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 E n of Z two n, this here is a map, is a homeomorphism defined by that. And the small cover is orientable if and only if there exists a basis such of that such that the image of this composition <coughs> is zero is, is one. Actually we find uh, we check the theorems and find the theorems can be adjusted to meet all the real torus manifolds instead of only the small cover by merely some parallel generalization. Because the uh, the small the cells compositions can be see very clear from the from the polytops on the bottoms and we can see less a uh, close chance and to to make that the top spatial number is one, and it, this is uh, can be reclaimed by Charles and the Park work because if the if the Z two four coloring delta is orientable, the top spatial number is uh, is one. So there is definitely a lies of the characteristics of delta is all one. So, um, in this case, we can show only the sums of the first three, three lines can be the only choice. So we can also reclaim this. Uh, that that's parallel generation use the choice and the parse theory, and here we can have a remark to see some orientable conditions clearly. Every admissible Z23 coloring lambda over Pn has only an unique admissible extent. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Has only a unique admissible extent Z24 coloring delta, whose characteristic matrix satisfies that the sum of every column is 1 mod 2. We can see a simple example. Um, this one is what we can just before this one is the S2, and this one can also use the reconstruction procedure to see is exactly the RP2, and now their characteristic metric is this one, at to make sure every column is one more two than here, one more two. So we have the only choice to add the, this line. This is called extending, admissible extending. So, uh, I just mentioned before that uh, in that case um, we calculate there in one, one P, two P, three P, actually we can calculate every piece and have uh, so many coloring, but if we turn to uh, uh, ori uh, orientables, that will be one, uh, 10, yeah, 10 less and here is 40, 40 less and here is 200 less means 200 will be the unorientable and here 40 is unorientable and this 10, there will be 10 will be unorientable. Orientable will take the <coughs> most part. So we come to this main theory again and we want to prove this theory. Firstly, for an admissible Z23 coloring lambda on MP, there is 
a natural Z24 coloring deltas on MP. Thus, we have two, three. Uh, you see, and this two, four coloring, this two, three coloring, but they over same dimensional polytop. So they, oh, sorry, this, oh yeah. The polytop is always dimension three. So we got the small cover is always the dimension three. We have the two three dimensional manifolds, MP deltas and MP lambda, where the MP delta is the orientable double cover of the MP delta, just like here. The first step. And then we have two steps to show that. MP delta is geometrically bonding. Um, I want to give you some feelings of this geometric conjecture, just like the Mobius chip. Uh, if I cut from the middle, it will become a Some orientable things. Actually, we want we find um, admissible coloring. We have the these two manifolds. We find the pair. Why do we do this? Because we use one thing. Cut from here, and now we have a manifold here with the boundary these two. This is a double cover of this one. And when we cut, the double cover is the boundaries of this higher dimensional manifold. So it will look like, oh, yeah. We have uh, M MP deltas and MP lambda. And if um, we can, just embedding, I will explain this later, but I, I want to give uh, everybody a, a out like, if I, I can embed in this into a higher dimension, four dimension, this is uh, 112 uh, 20 cells, and I can embed in this in it. And the boundaries of the 100, of these manifolds cut, I mean cut from this MP delta, uh, MP lambda, is exactly, the boundary is exactly the MP delta. Am everyone clear here? Just like here, the mobiles I cut from, maybe you can regard this as a MP lambda, I cut from here, and the things will become like this. And now the boundaries, the boundaries is this. The boundary is actually the double cover of this one. Here is the double cover of the MP lambda, since it will be like that. So we just find some, um, something like that to just inspire us to find some pair. Why we just find some admissible coloring pair. Uh, maybe you will say that, oh, this um, is orientable. This is also orientable. Why we just require one is unorientable, the other is orientable, because here, or those is orientable, it is a trace eye bundle. We rechase these properties of trace eye bundles to this problem. So, since it's like that, we have two steps to show this geometrically bounding. We extend the color delta. Delta is the Z24 coloring to a Z25 coloring XMU on the 120 cell, such that this is an orientable four manifolds in which this can be embedded in. I omit some geometric detail here, but I want everyone to see that we, I can embed in this to a four dimensional space. <coughs> and then, since this MP delta is orientable double cover of and MP lambda, this can be inferred as this MP delta admits a fixed point freeze orientations reversing evolution. Therefore, 
this is a totally geodesic hyperbolic four manifolds with boundary. Is everyone clear here? I just have this is the admissible coloring I mentioned before and it's then to this to embedding it and make the things like that. Now I want to compute the lower bound. So the whole computation is um, be divided into the, the odd and the even. The, the, this odd and even means the NP, the number of n, because the situation is different. We calculate in different ways, and just like uh, for the for the even part, we just we divide it into four a uh, five lemmas to fulfill our calculation. Here we have five lemmas to fulfill our calculation. And we finally have this, our theorem, the slat v beer volume solver, regular rise angle hyperbolic dodecahedral in H3. For each even and in the Z, there are at least so many close hyperbolic manifold of volumes. This and each of them is geometrically bounding. And that's it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>